Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech doing a vintage report. This is on a homebrew list that I took to the last Friday Night Magic Vintage out at Mox Boarding House. I've also got a bonus list here. A friend of mine borrowed my dredge deck and went 4-0, beating some rather impressive players uh, with it. It's at the end of the tournament report. I'll go over that list also. This was put on by Mox Boarding House. They're doing a monthly uh, vintage Friday Night Magic. We had about 28 players there for it. Really nice turnout. Uh, some incredible decks, including a bit more of the vintage hate decks. I hope to actually run one of those in the future and talk about some of the cards in there as budget alternatives for playing vintage. Uh, about three-fourths of the people there had either power or dredge, and then there was about a quarter that was some type of uh, vintage hate from what I saw on the tables. Uh, the deck that I played was a mid-range deck trying to take advantage of Young Pyromancer, Cobble Therapy, Gitaxian Probe, and Force of Will, along with some power to back it up. I actually like the deck a lot in concept. Execution was a little bit weak. This was also the first time I'd really played the deck, so I did make some play mistakes with it. I still like the idea behind it. It needs to be tightened up a little bit, though. It's trying to do a little bit too much of everything. Uh, Snapcaster Mage was one of my absolute favorites. I also really like the Black Splash here. Cobble Therapy is a powerhouse, an incredible card, especially with Gitaxian Probe in the same deck. Now, there's a few nombos in here that I would actually avoid. I've got both Dark Confidant and Dig Through Time in here. I think you need to go one way or the other. Dark Confidant is incredible, but flipping a Dig Through Time hurts a lot. Dig Through Time works really well with the amount of cantrips and things that you're putting into your graveyard. You need to focus on one or the other of those two particular strategies. Dak Faden was also great in this deck overall. I went 2-2 two two with this deck, although at least one of those losses was entirely my fault. And let's run through the games and talk about those. In round one, I played against Dredge, and I've got Wastelands and Deathrite Shaman, which by no means gives me game one. In fact, game one is really rough. When I got to game two, I side in four more pieces of hate, which is probably not enough hate. I probably need to add two or three more. Surgical Extraction being my favorite, I like it a lot. Uh, against Mental Misstep, though, it's probably a mistake compared to Tormon's Crypt. I got really excited in game two after surgically extracting his Bazaars on turn one. Uh, turn three, I surgically extracted his Bridges, but I missed the fact that he had flipped an Alish Norn, which was Dread Return to kill my board. It was my mistake entirely. I had a very solid hold on that game. I do like my chances with this particular setup. I probably had two more pieces is a dredge hate though to really give the deck a solid chance on game two and game three. My MVPs were clearly Surgical Extraction and Tormont's Crypt. Uh, Nile Spellbomb is really underwhelming. It is not as powerful as Surgical Extraction and it has the mental misstep problem. What I like about Surgical is that I can also flash it back with Snapcaster Mage, hitting a second target. Normally, Surgical is not the type of card I like to play. Uh, I like the Tormont's Crypt approach much better, and long term, I'm probably going to switch all the way over to Tormont Crypts. Round 2, I played against Red White. Hate, really solid deck, very fair deck. I had a Liliana in the sideboard that is really designed to play against this type of deck. I did not have enough main deck control to deal with the number of creatures that they were putting out. I was able to drop a true name in both game one and game two and still lose the races. Unless that Jitte gets on the true name, I don't have enough control to really take over the board, which is showing that this deck is a little fragile to actual fair decks and to your uh, workshop decks in general, which is where DAC comes in. It's great against workshop, but not good against these fair decks. I need either more hate for this type of a deck in sideboard, which I'm not sure is the right idea. I think it may actually be better to put in a few more 
uh, creatures for a little more pressure. In my game one, I never hit red mana, uh, which kept my young pyro in hand off the board, even with a brainstorm and a ponder in my opening. Would have been a very different game if I had landed that young pyro early enough. I do like that the deck was playing Cavern of Souls. In fact, I loaned the player my Cavern of Souls and then <laughs> saw them crush my Force of Wells. Cavern of Souls is such a powerhouse. If you don't already have them, pick them up. This is a card that could easily be a $50 staple for Modern and Legacy. Liliana the Veil vale is the type of card that helps a lot. True Name was very, very strong for me. I just needed to land some more young Pyromancers or to get that Jate attached to the true name as soon as possible to start clearing their board. In round three, I played an interesting workshop white deck. Uh, it, it was definitely designed to be a vintage hate deck. Uh, there were Chalice of the Voids that dropped very early, uh, getting rid of the ability for your opponent to play Moxes or Brainstorm, Ancestral, depending on whether they put it on zero or one. I had a very fair package of equipment. Uh, Dak was really the all-star against this deck. Dak is a powerhouse against any type of a workshop-based strategy. Being able to take control of their artifacts is really nice. Dark Confidant also came in very, very useful to me, although I was one card away from flipping the dig through time on my Dark Confidant and killing myself. If I'm going to play Dark Confidant, you got to pull that dig through time out. Uh, Dak has started to drop back down in price. He was up around the 50 range, and he's floating around 40, 42 currently. Now's a decent time to pick him up. Long term, Dak is a powerhouse, a great casual card, a good vintage card, and even a good legacy card. Now, round four, I played against a Mentor of the Meek deck with Young Pyros and Gush. It also had Delvers. This was a very, very strong deck, probably a better deck than mine. Gush is the most powerful draw spell that is not restricted. Gush is really, really good in these decks. I got lucky to pull it out. My opponent missed a few triggers. My young pyros uh, competed against the mentors of the meek. There were some really interesting sideboard tech that this gentleman had. Sudden Shock is very, very nice sideboard tech for beating opposing mentors or young pyros. It just shuts down that stack right away. I'm going to look at playing some Sudden Shock in my sideboard if I'm running red. It's better than Lightning Bolt with so many mentor of the meek out there. Overall, Cobble Therapy, Gataxian Probe, Young Pyro, and Dak Faden have to have a deck that works them all together. I just haven't found it yet. The list that I put forward here is nowhere near optimal. Needs some more tweaking to really be competitive. Moving on to the other deck that was played on this weekend. James Johnson, a strong local legacy player known for playing Rug Delver. In fact, I've got a video that I'm working on editing right now of him talking about the basics of Rug Delver. He brought my Dredge deck and just crushed with it. Went 4-0 with it. James, in his rounds, played against both a Pro Tour player and a Pro Tour Top 25 in the World Player. Had really strong opponents and did extremely well. This list is a little bit different than the list that I put forward a few months ago. This is the slower control version of Dredge, as opposed to the combo list that I highlighted a few months ago. This list does not play Dread Return. It plays more Icarids. It plays Mental Missteps, uh, Ingotures, along with Leyline of the Void main deck. And it, it is really set up to do well against Workshop, to do well in the Mirror Match, and to grind games out with a lot of power. Cobble Therapy, once again, is incredibly powerful in this deck. You are often using it, trying to guess a card, and then flashing it back and hitting things that you know are in their hands. If it's just a card you get to via dredging, you're still very happy to see it 
super powerful deck. It is a difficult deck to play because of the number of triggers there are, but if you can keep track of all of the triggers, play them in the right order, one of the big tips to this deck is make sure that you use your bazaars during your upkeep in most cases, so that you've got some better selection and you know what's going on when you move into your draw phase. I really like this deck. The one change James wants to make is to add Firestorms over Chain of Vapor. Um, Firestorm is great for attacking creatures and getting through a few points of damage also. Uh, Chain of Vapor I had in this particular list because of some of the permanents, including Leyline of the Void. It gives you something else to go with the Nature's Claims. Uh, solid list though overall. I definitely recommend checking it out if you are interested in playing Dredge. So if you are interested in playing in a vintage Friday Night Magic, Mox Boarding House is continuing to run these. The next one is coming up June 12th at 7.30. I definitely recommend it. Um, I am unfortunately not going to be making that one, although I will be loaning my dredge deck out to uh, James, and I may be loaning a uh, power deck out. Uh, great tournaments overall, very well done by Mox Boarding House. Thank you, everybody who's over there supporting the channel on Patreon. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, the angel tokens are in the mail. We're going to have some options for people to buy them come middle of June, so watch for that if you are interested in those custom angel tokens. I've actually had to reorder them. They've been so popular at this point. Thanks so much for all your support. We've got videos coming out, including a new EDH top 10 list for blue this week, and I'm still working on that Basics of Burn strategy video.